Welcome back to another AP Chemistry video. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're learning about thermodynamics, and specifically heat and work. And so we are learning about those uh, two forms of energy as they relate to chemical reactions, so thermodynamics in chemistry. Well, when we say heat and work, heat or heat transfer is denoted by the letter Q. And so we're going to use Q to talk about uh, heat transfer in chemistry. So we have the Q there. And if the system gains heat, well, Q is positive. Okay, sometimes we, we call that uh, an endothermic process. If a system loses heat, we're going to say that Q is negative. And so that's going to be uh, what we call an exothermic process. And so we'll be talking about that in this lesson and also in some here that we uh, have later on. Now, work is denoted by the letter a W, and so we're going to have uh, that. Uh, if work is done on a system, the W is going to be positive. So some students have a little trouble keeping that straight, that if work is done on a system, it's positive, and if work is done by the system, work is a negative. Well, think about this. If you do work on your house, maybe you're trying to, re to remodel something or fix it up, maybe paint it or something like that, well, when you're done, work has been done on your house, well, that's a positive for your house, isn't it? Your, your house looks nicer, maybe it goes up in value, it's a positive for your house. But if work is done by you, you're the one that does the work, how do you feel at the end of the day? Well, you probably feel tired, you feel a little bit more negative, you know, because you're, you're really tired. So maybe that'll help you keep it straight when we say work, you know, if it's done by the system, that's negative, work done on the system, it's positive. Now, we can take these two forms of energy and put them together. And we call it E, the change in total internal energy of a system is delta E, and that's fine by taking the Q and adding it to the W. So let's try several examples of this and see if we can find the total internal energy change in some chemical systems. So here we have a system where 60 joules of heat are absorbed by the system while the system does 50 joules of work. Calculate the total internal energy change in the system. So once again, we're gonna use that equation we saw on the last slide, delta E equals Q plus W. So we're solving for the total internal energy change, that's our delta E. Now Q is the heat. It's 60 joules, but is that positive or is that negative? Well, notice, that the 60 joules are absorbed by the system. So that means that it's gain, so it's positive 60 joules. How about the work? We know it's 50 joules, but is that a positive or a negative? Well, notice the system is, it says it's doing the work. It does 50 joules of work. So that's a negative, isn't it? Doing work is negative. Okay, so negative 50 joules. So when you do the arithmetic on this, 60 minus 50, it's a positive 10 joules. Okay, let's try another example. A system releases 100 joules of heat while 70 joules of work are done on the system. Calculate the delta E, the total internal energy change. Once again, we're using the same equation and we're trying to solve for delta E. So Q is heat. And it says it releases, so that means it's losing 100 joules of heat. So that's negative 100 joules. And the work, well, 70 joules of work are done on the system. So that's positive, isn't it? So it's positive 70 joules. So do the arithmetic on here, 70 minus 100, that's negative 30 joules this time. Okay, so we can see how to calculate the total internal energy change. Now, in this course, over this video and the next several videos, as, as it turns out, in this section on thermodynamics, we're going to be spending a lot of time learning how to calculate the heat, how to calculate the Q. That's a pretty uh, major thing that we're going to be learning over the next several videos. But how do we calculate work? You know, that's some seems a little bit harder to do. We have thermometers that help us uh, get temperature and, and, and heat by extension, but how do you calculate work? Well, there's an equation for that. And here's the equation. The work is equal to negative P 
delta V. Now, what does all this stand for? Well, W stands for work. And work, when we calculate this uh, in this particular equation, is probably going to be given to us in liter atmospheres. We'll talk about what that means here in a minute. Now, the P is the external pressure outside the system. Okay, so we have to monitor the, the air pressure outside the system. That's going to be normally given to us in atmospheres. Now, delta V is the change in volume of the system. So we're talking about a system that's changing in volume. That's really the way that work takes place, and that's the, the way that we're concerned with in this course. And the way you find that, of course, is the final volume minus the initial volume, and that's going to be in liters. So let's do a, a couple problems here and see if we can calculate the work. So here we have a closed gas container that is attached to a movable piston, and that's normally how these problems are going to work. Uh, no pun intended. The piston is pushed down so that the volume of the container is reduced from 0.5 liters down to 0.2 liters. If the external pressure surrounding the container is 0.98 atmospheres, calculate the work change involved in the system in joules. So we're going to calculate the work. So we're going to use W equals negative P delta V. So we're solving for a W, which is work. Now, do we know what the P is? Well, yes, the pressure is 0.98 atmospheres. So I'm going to put that here in, plug that in for P. And then delta V, uh, final minus initial, uh, final volume was 0.2 liters minus the initial volume, 0.5 liters. So I'm going to plug that in for delta V. And so when I do the arithmetic on that, I have uh, negative 0.3 times negative 0.98. So the work is going to be positive 0.294. And notice what my units are, liter atmospheres. Now that's what I said it was going to be in the equation, right? But is that the unit that we want to have? Well, no, because it says you want the work in joules. So that means we're going to have to do a little conversion here, aren't we? So what is a liter atmosphere? Well, a liter atmosphere is equal to 101.3 joules. And so on the AP exam, they're going to give you that conversion factor, but you're going to have to be expected to know how to use it. So you're going to take the 0.294 liter atmospheres and convert that to joules. So that means on the bottom, we're going to put liter atmospheres. On the top, we're going to put joules. And the equation or the conversion factor tells us it's 101.3 joules in one liter atmosphere. So we can cancel liter atmospheres top and bottom. And we multiply this. And that seems to be about, how much is that? About 29.8 joules. And that is positive. So since it's positive, what does that mean? Is work being done on the system, or is the system doing the work? Work is being done on the system, isn't it? Since W is a positive value here. So let's try another problem. Let's add this here. We're going to say that 900 joules of heat are added to a container, causing its volume to expand from 1 liter to 1.2 liters. If the external pressure surrounding the container is 1.01 atmospheres, Calculate the total internal energy change in this system in joules. So this time, it's not just asking for work. We're, we're going to have to find that too. We have to find the total internal energy change. So we're going to have to do a little bit more than that. We're going to have to solve for delta E. And that's equal to Q plus a W. Now, we know what the Q is. It says that a certain amount of heat is added to the container. So that means it's a positive, isn't it? If we're adding the heat, the system is gaining the heat. So Q is a positive 900 joules. So we have that much. We have to calculate the work now. So we're going to solve for W. It equals negative P times delta V. So we don't know what the work is, so we're going to solve for that. The pressure is 1.01 atmospheres. So I'm going to plug that in for P. And then delta V. Uh, final vi uh, minus initial is 1.2 liters minus 1 liter. So I'll plug that in. And of course, 1.2 minus 1 is 0.2 liters, and that's positive. And when we do the arithmetic here, we get that the work is negative 
0.202 liter atmospheres. And like we did in the last example, we have to convert that to joules using the conversion factor. So we're going to set this up here. We have negative 0.202 liter atmospheres. And we're going to convert. We have liter atmospheres on the bottom, joules on the top. And we said that there are 101.3 joules in one liter atmosphere. So we can cancel liter atmospheres and multiply. And we get that the work change is negative 20.5 joules. So this time, the system is doing the work, isn't it? Since it is a uh, negative work. And generally, that's what happens when the system expands. If, some, if the system is expanding, that means that the system is doing the work. You know, it's got to push up on a piston or something like that. So now we can plug into the equation over here. We have delta E, which is what we're solving for, equals Q plus W. So we have the Q, positive 900, and we have the W, negative 20.5. Work is done by the system. So we're going to plug that in here. And so now we can solve for delta E. And delta E is a positive about 880 joules. And so that's how we can solve for delta E on this. We have to get the heat. We have to calculate the work. And so that's how we can figure that out. Hope you learned something here. Hope you learned how to calculate work. Hope you learned about calculating total internal energy. If you learned something from my video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to get notifications. I upload lots of AP Chemistry videos. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for a long time, so I hope to uh, share what I uh, know with you so that you can pass and make a five on that AP exam or, or do a, a great job in general chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug. Join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together. We can learn some